<laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. So my name is Sherilyn, and I'm going to be doing an interview today on behalf of a young theatre. And today I've got the absolute pleasure of speaking to Vinegar Strokes. So I'm going to give you a bit more background as to what he's been up to. Um, but more importantly, I think it's important that he should be able to explain a bit more about what's been going on, especially in lockdown and sort of looking ahead at the future of the performing arts industry. So I'll go straight in with my first question, because I think this will be a good um, for people to get to know you. Um, yeah, we could. That will give you a little bit of background. So <laughs> obviously for us, um, you know, m the wider public will know you probably from RuPaul's Drag Race, from the UK. Yeah. Race. Um, but obviously you do, you do have a big name in the West End and in the entertainment industry, mm. uh, anyway here, based in the UK. So I just wanted to kind of find out a bit about you and sort of what it was that got you started with performing and a little bit about your journey so far coming to Yeah, um, oh my God, I think, I think I've got the same kind of journey as many kids who kind of um, are at school and they're bored and they, and they hate school and, and don't really know where they kind of fit in with like, you know, they're, they're rubbish at like the academics, like maths and, you know, geography and history and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But they're really good at like the, the creative side of it. So I always kind of um, naturally and organically kind of veered towards like music and drama um you know um like cdt woodwork like textiles like making things or creating things that was always like the thing i kind of um, always veered towards as a kid at school um and yeah and it just kind of i just kind of was like okay this is something i'm enjoying this is something i'm getting a lot out of um you know, my my tutors my teachers are telling me that i'm very good at certain things I'm like great i'll just carry that on um and yeah did all kind of the, the, the school plays and you know got got the odd lead now and again so i was like oh great i must i must be doing something right there and amazing <laughs> um you know was fa you know, found that i could sing i was like okay cool okay singing's cool i'll do that as well um and then because i'm from like a very kind of single single parent working class background anyway so um you know the theater and um that that side of the arts was never something that was very accessible to me my kind of initial access to theater would have been through like drama club and um man, like getting into like random like youth theaters and that kind of stuff in my area so that's kind of how i started get, get, getting into theater before i'd actually even even seen stuff really and obviously through through school thank god we, we, we had like a great like um drama department so we always kind of went out to see like women in black and um, yeah. um and like the classics like i mean the spectacles and that kind of stuff so i was like oh so this is what theater is this is great and because it was all plays i really enjoyed the, the, the kind of of acting side more more than the music actually more than the musical yeah. side so um yeah so a lot of my kind of exposure came from like the random free school trips that we could get um joining youth theatres and also just watching lots, lots of films lots of tv and that kind of stuff um i think like in the 90s we had so many the 90s and noughties, we had so many amazing like films and tv shows uh, but i was like oh my god these, these are amazing especially for comedy as well so um i i always watched so many different varieties of different things from my like, Monty Python to Death Becomes Her, um, to like all these random like, you know, black um, comedy shows like The Real McCoy and, you know, Ab Fab, French and Saunders, like all these different comedians, you know, and once I discovered Joan Rivers, I was like, oh my God, what the hell's going on with the world? This is amazing. Yeah. So yeah, I always kept myself kind of very open to what I was watching and, and, and what I can get my hands on just just because that was like my only access into what acting was what performing was and that kind of stuff so I think a lot of my a lot of my references and influences when when it comes to acting and to drag come from those essentially so that, yeah. that really I mean this was something I wanted to cover with you a bit later but because we're on that topic obviously one mm. of the first things that you said when you went into drag race was that you know you were dragged up <laughs> So yes, you, kind of, you, know, you really emphasize that. So just tell people a bit more about what that is and what that means to you. Well, I just thought, you know what, I need to make sure that people understand that when I'm coming into the room, I'm not just someone who's putting a wig on, you know, but I'm like, I'm like a plumber during the day or drag queen during the night. No, no, no. I've, I've studied, I've got experience. Uh, so basically a drag is basically a drag queen who acts and an actor who does drag, essentially. Yeah. Um, so I think that really encompasses what my, what my kind of career is about in that, you know, it's all an act. Like I'm not, I'm not putting on a wig. Um, you know, it's funny because I've got a lot of friends who do drag and they, a lot of them are like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm of the non-binary persuasion or I've, or I've, I've always explored my gender and that kind of stuff. For me, it was never about gender. It was never about anything like that. It was all about kind of creating a character and creating this kind of 
other persona which will make people laugh or make people cry or make people go what the hell's going on they just wonder why they paid 30 pounds to, to see this thing on stage like do you know what I mean? it was all about kind of creating entertainment i never went went into drag from the point of view of um a, a gender fluidity and that which i think is amazing i think yeah. it's a great that someone can find drag through that but for me it's all about theater and the character yeah yeah exactly. yeah yeah so I'm interested to know then, so what was your first experience like in drag? Because I feel like there's always this first time and like sort of how you kind of cross over into that. How was your first experience in drag mm. and how did it make you feel? Like, you know, what was it like? <laughs> Yeah, so drag queens, I think, are born, there's, there's two, two types of queens, there's the Halloween queen, or there's like kind of the, the New Year's Eve kind of queen that comes out. <laughs> I was definitely a Halloween queen. Um, so what happened was, I, again, I wasn't looking to do drag at all, like it wasn't something I was kind of on my radar. Um, kind of directly, even though when I look back, I'm always like, oh, there were so many different signs that were leading me towards doing this. Think things people would say, certain, certain even just certain like cabaret shows. I, I re really got into like watching cabaret and stand up. So I was like, even like certain performers I'd go and watch, I actually paid to go and watch specifically. I was like, oh, I, I like that. Um, and I ended up, um, I was doing stand up at the time because at that moment in my life, um, I, uh, I had. Left, left my agent there was no there was no auditions I was like what the hell's going on I was working in Harrods for a year and I literally was like climbing the walls I wasn't, oh I wasn't doing anything great yeah I wasn't having I wasn't doing anything kind of creative or anything like that so I was a bit like I need to do something now and I'm not and I, maybe, maybe, maybe because I'm a Leo or whatever but there's always that thing where I'm always like if nothing's coming towards me I'll just make things come towards yeah. me essentially <laughs> so I was like yeah, so I was like, you know what? Um, I'll just I'll, I'll just start doing stand up. You know, I'll just start doing stand up, and we'll see where that goes from there. Um, and I only did, did stand up just, just to get back on the stage because I felt like I lost a lot of my confidence from like being out, out of the game for a year. And I and I and I did lose that kind of thing that made me really enjoy and love the arts in a way. So I was like, I need to get that back because that's kind of that's part of, that's part of who I am. You know what I mean? I've, I've had that since since I was a kid, so I need to get that back in some capacity. So. I went went to see some stand up. I was like, everyone's awful. I'm 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 hilarious just sitting here watching you. So I'm gonna do what you're doing. So end up doing the stand up. Um, I did that for about oh god, maybe about six seven months. Oh wow. Um, and it, yeah and it was it was cool like and what was nice about that was it was nice to kind of focus my brain onto something creative in terms of writing and then creating like this kind of stage persona and you know and kind of going with a look and that kind of stuff yeah. and i and i said you know what this is awesome i'm loving it and i'm enjoying the process of it so i'm, I'm gonna carry on but the issue is is that there's there's zero money you make no money from doing it you you, you don't really make any kind of gigs really you kind of do the odd kind of five minute ten minute slot here and there yeah. but unless you're constantly doing it every night and getting everyone to see and doing the rounds of the circuit um it's hard for people to give you a, a gig because because yeah. they, they, they don't know who you are so i was yeah. like okay i'll just do it anyway because i because i need to, i need to do it like i, I it's something i need to do um, and then a friend of mine um, ran a bar in Farringdon at the, at the time I was doing oh. it, and he was like, hi, and he was like, "Hi, I'm, I'm doing this uh, this this Halloween night. Can you come and do a bit, bit of um, performance there?" I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll come and do it." Oh, um, disclaimer: Can you come dressed like a witch or something? Because you know, you know, um, Coven, um, American Horror Story, Coven. Yes, yeah. It was, it was all that theme. That was it was the all theme. that. So was, yeah, it was all yeah. that theme. So it was like kind of like witches dressed in black, looking very sexy. I went. Uh, no, ab absolutely not. That's that's absolutely insane. I'm not going to dress up as a as a witch for your show. He was like, "I'll pay you seventy quid." So I was like, "What time do you need me?" Yeah, so literally, yeah, as, soon, as, soon, as, soon, as soon as soon as I had money, I was like, "Oh, right, seventy quid. I better be there because yeah. this, this is a paid job." You know, my my old um, acting pro professional hat was coming on. Yeah. So I was like, "Oh, I better be there." Yeah. Um, and um, and his brother was actually starting drag around that time as well. He just been in Singapore for a bit and started doing drag up there so he was like right um you know Kevin will, will, will put you into drag and I was like okay cool you just get yourself a wig get yourself some makeup okay cool turns out I spent the money and more that they were going to give yeah. me for this for this yeah. one night so I was like okay whatever I went on to I did like the typical like start start a drag start a drag queen kit like go, go on to ebay to find a dress that fits because yeah. when you're when 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 you're a plus size woman um 
well, when you're a plus size man trying to be a woman, sometimes yeah. it's hard to find uh, the, the, the plus size clothes that, that look good. Do you know what I mean? I think now they, the last kind of it's funny because in, in the last few years that I've seen is like, oh, actually, the, the plus size clothes women are way, way better than what they were five years ago. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, so yeah, 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 it's amazing. Um, so I got I got myself a dress from eBay. These shoes I still have when they literally caned my feet. My feet were like mm. they're, they're dead. Um, I wore like ten pairs of tights, pads. I did the whole thing. Um, and I looked all right. I was like, okay, she, she, looked, she looks okay for, for a first timer. Um, I did like a bit of stand up. I, I did some lip syncing because for me, I tend to do, I tend to throw everything at everything and just yeah. do it all. Of and course. then, um, and then I can edit afterwards. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I was giving it lip syncing. I was doing puppetry. I was doing some stand up. I sung a song. I said, I said happy birthday to someone. Oh, great it was, it, it was, it was a full production for se for seventy quid minus minus outfits and that kind of stuff, um, and yeah, that was the first time. And what's funny was I did the gig and I was like, oh my god, this feels like everything I wanted to do with the stand up and the comedy stuff, but this character's now emerged and it all kind of fits. Like I felt like my jokes were funnier. Yeah. I felt like I felt like, I felt like my voice was like Beyonce. Um, purely, I was drunk. But it <laughs> felt like it was, it felt like I was just, it just felt like the, the, the level up, the Sierra level up was just there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 so, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. This could be a thing. And bear in mind, Drag Race US had been out for a little bit at that time, I'd only ever seen maybe two or three episodes episodes of it. So, so that was quite good for me because it, it wasn't like I was watching that and going, "I want to emulate this one person or that person." Basically, actually, I was, I, I was, yeah. Actually, my all of my, my initial references were all people like, um, like from the characters I used to watch in these films and yeah. from these uh, TV shows. So it, so it's funny how when, when you have these references from stuff that you just enjoy as a kid yeah. and how actually yeah. they, they really, they really play a part in your, in your artwork. I don't just mean drag. I mean that if you're a poet, a painter, an actor, a dancer, a musician, a singer, whatever, like, you know, it, a lot of those things that you love as a kid really do play a part in what you do as an adult, as a creative. Yeah. So yeah, it was, a, it was a great night. I got very drunk for free. It was amazing. Um, but I think what I saw was that oh there is something here I don't know what it is yet but I can kind of see something here so yeah it, from that I was like that great, was let's, let's just carry on let's just carry on and see what happens and then yeah. here we are so yeah that was the birth would you say of the the, the, the so birth so can I say vagina is was 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 you know was let out <laughs> a, a huge baby I don't know what I can say on this but yeah let out a huge baby <laughs> <laughs> cool okay that's really good to know so what I want to know then is obviously I know that you've done quite a few shows here in London and, and you've kind of mm. gone around the circuit a little bit. But in terms of what, because I feel like there's a big difference between doing theatre and then going, right, I'm going to go on a TV show in a competition. So what was mm. the thing that encouraged you to then go, right, I'm actually going to apply for Drag Race? Because it's quite a big well, step. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, initially I only auditioned for Drag Race just to kind of throw, throw, throw my name in the pot because, you know, I, I had been doing drag for like, for at that point, was it four or five years? Just like, just, just over four years, I think at the time, cu coming up to five years. Yeah. Um, and I, and I really, um, and again, I hadn't been doing it. If, if you look at someone like Bagger or like Davina or the Vivian or, you know, plenty of other drag queens in London mm -hmm. or, or around, yeah. they've been doing drag for like, you know, 10 years, 10 yeah. years plus. So I was very much, even though I was one of the more mature ladies in the room, um, I I probably been doing drag less less than say um, a few of the few of the younger ones. You know, I think Blue had been doing drag for maybe two or three years, um, Gothy for like five minutes. Um, so you know, I I I'd only really been doing drag really for for. for coming to five years and at that point I was still kind of finding what I was doing I, and that's the thing I always say like at that time you can only go into something like that with what you know at the time you can't you can't come out look you know being polished when when you're polished might, might be a year later or two yeah. years later and I didn't and when I applied I was like well I'm definitely not going to get on because I'm not because uh, I was I was kind of comparing myself to the American girls going well I'm not like a like a, a Kennedy Davenport I'm not like a yeah. Shangela just yet I'm not like a like a Bob the Drag Queen like performance wise I've got it like I know for a fact the performance was on it you know any kind of performance change that's, that's why I've got it I didn't, I didn't make it past Snatch Game because well two Snatch Game and onwards because be those kind of next three changes were like oh I would I would have smashed all three of those yeah. but whatever 
Um, but, but the performance size I had down, but the kind of aesthetic side, the makeup, I'm still learning stuff. I was still learning how to do a natural, like a proper natural eyebrow or yeah. how to, or how to make a dress. How to, I was still learning things because, uh, because actually while, while I was learning how to do drag, I was also gigging and also doing acting jobs. So uh, in a way I, I was working before I could kind of walk in a way, do yeah. you know what I mean? You uh, which is, which is in, like, fully yeah. into it. Yeah, which is amazing. So I think I went in there with a with this kind of thing of I will just go with what I know right now because that's all I can do. Um, and yeah, I'm glad I I'm glad I did and kind of trusted what I did know. Um, but yeah, it is a very just to answer your question. It's a very different world when you go from say you know your kind of job essentially, which is yeah. which is a show. Um, and then on top of that, there, there could be a waitering job or a bar job to kind of support that, to yeah. then go into this kind of TV, and not even just TV, it's reality TV, do you know what I mean? I've done, I've done drag on TV before in front of the cameras, that's fine, because I'm, I'm playing a character, I'm acting, but this is reality, un underline the word real, like yeah. you have to go in and, be, and kind of show yourself off, and I think for some people, showing themselves is the hardest job that they've ever had to do, do you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, but for me, because again, whip in the words of Tina Turner, women of a certain age, um, you know, they, you know, you, you, I was like, I'm going to go in and just not kind of produce myself. I'll just show myself. So if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling annoyed one day, I'll be annoyed on there. If I'm feeling excited, if I'm feeling stupid, I will just be that way because that's the whole point of reality TV. So I'm glad I kind of went in with that mentality and not this kind yeah. of, as a few people did, um, they went on with a mask going, this is how yeah. I have to show myself. When yeah. yourself, when well, actually on reality TV, people fall in love with the person, not this kind that's of, true. I know that you've made up, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and it's nice to yeah. see the difference between the two, I think, especially when you watch Drag Race and you can kind of see the real person and the character. And I think the ones can that you know are the ones Yeah, can you imagine being in character for 24 7? It's tiring. <laughs> Who's got that kind of time? Who has got the kind of time to if you like if if oh I'm a bitch today, great. You're gonna try to be a bitch for 24 hours. Go for it. Go oh for God, it. I'm, see, I'm gonna see how long you last. Yeah, I'll see how long you last for that. Great. Yeah, I know what you mean. All right. So another question I was gonna ask you actually was how do you feel about the acceptance of drag in the UK and performing in general with and within your mm. culture and community as well? So like how do you feel that that sort of do you think that America's helped the fact they've had drag race there? You know, tell me a bit more about how you feel that sort of mm. set from here. Um well, I think I think Britain really kind of started drag anyway. Really, like you know, if yeah. if you look if you look back at our, back at our history of theatre anyway, um, you know, going back to Shakespeare, we we literally started the word drag. Like, where are the drags? And 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 here and here comes Juliet looking with, with, with a beard. Like, great, yeah. we've got it. Do you know what I mean? So so we started it at the end of the day. So I think drag's been such a massive part of the British entertainment culture anyway, especially with like Panto and that kind of stuff. And I feel like, especially hitting on Panto, I think Panto is the first kind of exposure for young kids of, yeah. oh my God, a man is playing this woman and this woman is obviously a big massive caricature of these crazy wigs and crazy dresses and, cra and that ugly makeup and that yeah, kind of stuff. Hide it, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but you, but you accept that as the kind of, as the kind of the matriarch and you kind of go, okay, this, this is the mum of the, of the show and this is the dame and this is what a dame is. Um, and I think, for, I mean, just for me, because obviously my background and my whole reason for getting into drag was because of, of a, from, from a theatrical point of view. Um, for me, it's all just like, it's all just panto, panto <laughs> dame work. It's just that the makeup's very pretty, the wigs are very nice and the outfits are very nice. Yeah. But essentially you're playing, I, I'm playing this kind of random woman who's a bit unhinged and that kind of stuff. But again, all, as I said, all the influence are coming from these different places. So I think it's great that, um, that the art form has been seen as a bigger thing than just kind of, a, a, a small pool of like you know whether it be men in wigs in a bar doing you know penis jokes and drinking gin all, all night which still happens which i yeah. do a lot of the time actually um and it's and it's also gone past the kind of like dame and lily savage vibes mm -hmm. as well so you can say oh there's actually more more people out there who can do drugs Drag and put that on there and the fact that it's crossed over into like music and presenting and tv film um cooking um you know uh, makeup you know, the, i think every industry is going to try to get a taste of drag in there in yeah. some shape or form which i think is amazing because then you know, drag is literally every kind of 
part, you know, you're, you're, you're the makeup artist, you're the wig stylist, you're the, you're, the, you're the fashion designer, you're then the director, you're the, you're the lighting person, you're, 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 the, you're, the, you're, the, you're the song MD, do you know what I mean? You're, you are the act, do you know what I mean? You're, you're doing so many different things and so many different bows, strings to the bow yeah. um, when you, you do drag. So I think it's great that um, drag's been so accepted in this country. And I do think drag race is definitely, a, a play, plays a big hand with that, purely because Look, look at Bake Off, you know, I, I, I feel like we all saw the, 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 the way everyone went mental over baking when Bake Off came out first. He's like, oh my God, it's just, it's just, it's just a bit of cake and bread, but okay, <laughs> everyone jumping on it. And yeah. I think when, when, when you've got a platform where people can watch it and see the kind of the, the, the behind the scenes and the kind of cracks in the yeah. armour of it, people get, get invested, people invest in it uh, emotionally, sometimes financially, um, and, it, and it starts to inspire them, inspire their kids. Um, and so I think there's so much more with the industry of drag um, that it is just more than just a man in the wig. It's actually a place where people feel that they can step into and be accepted, yeah. where, whether that's as a performer or just someone who's just got like a voyeur who's just watching and enjoying yeah. what they're seeing. So oh, yeah, I think it's great yeah, that we've, that we've, it's been, yeah, I think it's great that it's been accepted. And I think there's still a long way to go. You know, I think, you know, it's still, for me, it's still a protest. It's not just, it's not just party party. There's still a protest for, for rights of people in, in the community and that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I think it's a great way to, to get people listening and involved. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense, definitely. It's like a metaphor for sort of all that self-love, embrace, be who you want to be, and I love Yeah, it. because you can, you totally can. Okay, so, all right, so you've already kind of touched on your sort of idols and your influences, but I'm actually interested to know who's your biggest idol in the entertainment industry and why? Oh my gosh, um, ah, Oh, it's a toss-up because I feel like a lot of it's, it's, it's definitely a woman for sure. I don't know, I've always just been drawn to like women and funny women, especially. I've always just been drawn to like just funny. I just think I just think there's so much beauty in someone yeah. in a woman just being just being hilarious and like you know on the. Un unapologetic about that as well mm -hmm. but also having a bit of that fierce quality for me like Joan Rivers is like my biggest 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 comedy hero just yeah. because you know I love I love a I love comedy which is a bit like it's a bit lowbrow um you know slacking off everybody and that kind of it's stuff because it's fun I think I think I think you know we we live in a world especially now where we just forget to laugh at things actually um you know we're, we're it's a very quick the culture now is very quick to go on the go on the defense yeah. and and cancel people and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But actually, if we if if we took if we took the piss out of them first, um, you you probably be like, oh, actually, I could I can, I can get over that quite quickly. But we live in this culture where, you know, so, someone said to someone like, like cancel them and that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah. so Joe Rivers is definitely a massive comedy hero from a comedic acting point of view. Whoopi Goldberg is like straight up there as well, oh. and she's black as well, which make which is great because again, I know obviously I don't I can't identify being a black woman but I can't think of being a black person who has this who has this kind of dream to carve through a very a very white industry do you know yeah, what I mean um, and for, very, yeah yeah, it's yeah and yeah and I think you know Whoopi's Whoopi is literally you know everything I want to be when I first started I used to say um hi I'm, I'm Vinegar Strokes I am the female Whoopi Goldberg haha ha, it's really funny um <laughs> do you know what I mean and it's and it's pretty because I was like I saw myself as like this this writer this comedian this actor I'm gonna make you laugh and make you cry and be like oh geez what's going on and I still see, see myself as that but Whoopi's definitely her career is definitely something I would love to emulate uh, whether that's in drag or not either way um yeah there's just yeah just love them so yeah definitely joan and whoopi are my favorite kind of people that's good to know yeah thank you <laughs> okay so another thing i wanted to ask kind of getting a bit more sort of to the sort of present like what's going on now um how mm. do you think that covid has had an impact on your experience as a performer and in the entertainment industry in general what are your thoughts on sort of what's been going well, on I, do you know i've had this chat a few times actually it's quite interesting so I think COVID has de absolutely kind of decimated the industry in a way, the, the theatre industry in a way, just because um, you, know, you, you just can't really, 
okay, if you just say for theatre, if you focus on that for a second, uh, you just can't be put on a show and have that and have these laws and these rules intact because you know you've got the people on stage trying to create the show, then you've got the people in the audience trying to um, enjoy the show, but then you've got the you've got the people in the office who are going, well, we've sold you know five hundred seats out of the three thousand seats that we've got in the theatre. We're not going to keep 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 this afloat. Afloat. So it's it's just a shame that there's there's not been that immediate help of we need to keep the arts afloat because I guarantee you the government will 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 regret not not putting more time and effort into the arts because it's so important. Um, you know, not it's it's important for for the economy. It's important for um, you know people who work in industry or people who are going to be coming up to work in the industry, you know, it's not, it's not a hobby, you know, this is it's, exactly. it's people's lives. It's the same as the person who, who works in the office down the road, not nine to five. It's exactly the same. It's, it's people's livelihoods. Um, so that's been awful. So that's bad. But on the flip side, I've actually worked, I haven't worked like more than, than I thought I would do in lockdown. I have done so much in lockdown. Um, really? And I think, and yeah, and thank God, because obviously, you know, you want to be able to, you know, stay afloat and you want to be able to not worry about that because I've, and I've been very lucky. And again, this is all because I have this extra thing, which is, which is drag, which is vinegar strokes. So Daniel, the actor, has been like, okay, I've got nothing, I've got no work coming up, but vinegar's been, been, fl been flying. So yeah. it's been, it's, been a double-edged sword for me because I, I i hate going to friends going yeah sure i've been working like i'm i've actually worked really busy i'm actually knackered that's how busy, yeah. how busy i am um so i've done like, yeah so i've done a lot of like telly bits and filming for like um like digital shows and that kind of stuff um i've got a few bits that are kind of on the on the pipeline coming up so it looks like meetings and this and that and the other so um so it's been it's been kind of I would actually say that COVID for me has been a really positive experience. Yeah. Um, just in terms of I've had the kind of double the double pleasure of going, right, I've had a nice break. Before before lockdown, I was mental. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm in Paris. Now I'm in Amsterdam. Oh, now I'm back in London. I'm in Scotland. I was all over the place. I was mental. Um, so I feel like I didn't need, <laughs> need a bit of a rest. Actually. I was yeah. like, I just, need a, I just need a couple of days off, please. Um, now I'm like, yeah. give me, like, put me anywhere. Look, now I'm yeah. like, I don't need any days off. Just put me anywhere. But um, I I've been able to rest and get back to things that I enjoyed when I was a kid. So the way I've kind of survived lockdown, I think, is just I'm painting, I'm, I'm painting canvases, yeah. I've decorated my room, I've tidied things. Yeah. Um, you know, I've I've been writing a show, I've been doing creative stuff, which is amazing. And then then joint with that, I've actually been going right. I need I, I need to be in drags. I've got to film this. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. So yeah, I've had a very positive lockdown experience. But mm. I oh, I feel so much for everyone who doesn't have that luxury who, yeah. who, 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 who relies on that one thing um you know whether it's performing or whatever to be which is their, their money maker yeah. um so yeah it's, it's very tricky i do i always feel a bit bad when my friends are like oh i haven't worked i'm like yeah sure i have <laughs> i've been working all the time <laughs> so and yeah it's quite interesting that you can see you can clearly see it from both both sides because you were only Daniel the actor like you say and then obviously Vinegar was mm. somebody who sort of came into play later so very easily mm. that could have not been the option so it's quite interesting to see that from both sides for sure well, and of course like and if you if you flip that coin again you know um if I didn't have um drag race and I was just doing drag on its own I'd still be I'd still be yeah. completely up up the creek because because uh, nowhere's open and you, and you can't get in there to perform so I'm glad that I either way I'm glad that drag um, allowed me to get onto Drag Race at this time um, on season one because it's allowed me to still work and kind of put things out there in the world, um, you know, without uh, without being like I've got no cash. So yeah, it's been a it's been an interesting journey. Definitely, I would say it's been interesting for sure. So another mm. question I was going to say was obviously I know that it's very difficult at this time because we don't it's kind of unpredictable. But in general, just from your experience when you were sort of getting into acting, getting into performing, getting into mm. everything, what kind of advice would you give to sort of a younger version of yourself or someone that was wanting to go into this industry? What kind mm. of tips would you give them and like what helped you? I want to advise the kid who always who always gets told. You, you, you're never gonna you're never gonna get to where you want to get to it's gonna be a no it's gonna be a no try something else do because i was that person literally i got told by 
tutors, even at drama school at Lippa like 10 years ago, oh, you might not want to do this because I don't think you're going to work or that's this kind of stuff. Um, you, know, you know, I had people saying to me, no, no, like it's, it's a no, no, no. And I was like, hang on a minute. Okay, I'm very upset that you've said this to me, yeah. but why am I still feeling like, you know, can I say F you? Like, why am I just saying F you and I'm still, still, still just going to do it? Yeah. Um, there was an amazing quote that I heard from Shangela um, on the other day on YouTube. Yeah. And she was, and I'm going to paraphrase it now because I've not got it now, but I recorded it because I was like, that's amazing. And she said, even though um, you, you could be upset one day, you, you could get told a no by your friend, a family member, a teacher, someone could just say no. And there are people out there who will not want to invest in your invest in your dreams, might not want to support you, they might not want to see you do anything good. Um, you know, as long as you still believe in what you're doing, that is like enough. So so you, you just carry on doing it and you never know what's gonna happen the like a year from then or two years from then yeah. you know and, and again you've got to think of this way if if i'd given up after that teacher told me at lippa in 2009 don't bother doing this do you know what i mean you're not you're not going to do it it's 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 just not you're not it's not for you find something else to make you happy yeah. if i'd listened to that one man steve buckwell if i'd listened to that one man um you know i would never have ended up on the west end in in what seven years later Wow, and that's a long time to wait. But like, yeah, but if, I, if I if I if I listened to that one person, I would have gone, okay, cool, I'll, I'll do something else then. And I would ne never experience going 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 through a stage door and do you, going up a stage. Do you think that sometimes the people that are told no are the ones that are more likely to see, succeed sometimes because that's got that little bit of resilience that kind of comes along with it? Yeah, I do. I do. I think. I think I think it's all down to the individual person as well. Yeah. Sometimes if you if you come from nothing, you've actually got nothing to lose. So no's and you no know, no's are something you've heard you've heard all your life. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, but I don't know. I feel like if you've got that inner voice, I know it sounds really spiritual, but if you've got that like little inner kid inside you saying no no you're gonna keep going because i wanted to do this when i was say five years old and we're doing this so you better carry on bitch you better carry on <laughs> and it's like oh okay cool so i'm doing it and again like there's so many opportunities for me for me personally where i could have stopped i could have given up so many opportunities but on the flip side of that we're flipping loads of coins today <laughs> on the flip the side of that the, the, I think the three or four times that I actually said, do you know what, forget it, I, I'm not, you know, after a bad audition, I'm not doing this no more, um, after that year in Harrods, I'm not going to bother, something has brought me back to having to do it, because something's come up and gone, oh, oh, okay, right, so I'll do that then, that's fine, and then, then the ball starts rolling, it's like, yeah. oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to give up, oh, oh God, now, now, now I've got to do that, okay, yeah. fine, so I just feel like, if you're meant to do something, you're going to do it. If you're meant to have lots of money, you're going to get lots of money. It just might come through another, another way that you never thought. The only way that I would say to that person who is getting told no, getting told try something else, is to always listen to the other stage directions in your life. Because I mean, there were so many things that were, be, that were putting at me. Again, like I said before, the more I think about how, where I was, um, when I was going, no, no to drag, no to drag, there were so many different stage directions that were coming at me going, you're going to do drag, you're going to do drag. Yeah. And, and, and I'm just glad that I'm the sort of person who I'm just going, I will just listen to it. I will say yes. And if it doesn't work out, fine. At least I tried it. I'll, just, I'll do something else. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. And that's okay. I think, I think there's so much pressure on young people to you know try something and be good at it straight away you don't need to be good at makeup to no. be great on stage the, you know prime example I, I look at some of the girls on my season who look stunning look gorgeous get them on get them on the stage with the microphone they can't speak yeah they cannot speak <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing yeah. in the words of john rivers if you can't speak don't talk because you because this is because as much as as much as you look phenomenal oh yeah. my god i wish i had my waist this big i wish yeah. i could look like that but if you can't speak <laughs> how are you it's how are you right. selling tickets <laughs> yeah how are you what's the act <laughs> what are you gonna do it's not a photo <laughs> Now, now, if this was a Tate Modern and you were standing there behind one of those ropes, I'd be like, okay, cool, yeah, I get it, I get it, I'm here to see yeah. this. 
I'm into it. Yeah. But this is this is the stage, you know. <laughs> so yeah, the, the the advice I would say to, as I said, the, the person who is getting told no, you know, doubting. Um, if you've got that little voice inside you that said, "No, bitch, we said we're doing this when we were five years old. We're doing it. Yeah. You will find a way. You do." just do it because you know this whole this whole industry is about who you know not what you know yeah. i've got most of my work for from knowing the right person um you know kissing the right person um <laughs> and, and going from there that's the whole reason why i've got i've had a lot of work and um being good at what i do and believing yeah. that i know that i'm good at what i do um again another quote from another legend kathy burke the three tips in the in the industry. Right. <laughs> um, what is it? Uh, turn up on time, brush your teeth, and don't be a. See yeah. you next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's and that's that's it. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, so yeah, I think. And again, it doesn't have to just be drag. I think a lot of people go, oh, but I don't want to do a drag queen. It's fine. You need to do drag. This. this what I'm saying applies to every okay. single part yeah. of the industry yeah. um, because. As we know, the creative arts are, is hard. It's a hard industry. If you are freelance, no one's told you to do this. You want to do this. <laughs> you want to do this. So yeah. if you want to do it, you better do it. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it applies to everything. So if you just want to paint in your bedroom and sell paintings for a thousand pounds, but you're but you're getting in your head, you better just do it and get 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 out your head and just do it because because people out there want to see what you're saying. They want to see what you're doing. Yeah. People are always watching. They are always watching. You know what I mean? do you People think are that, always watching. Do you think that saying yes in the industry does help as well? Sort of like two opportunities that maybe you wouldn't have been on the lookout for, but maybe kind of find yourself going down these yeah. different roads. Do you think that? Yeah, I have done so many random jobs, so many random fringe jobs and fringe shows. I'm like, why am I doing this? Again, I, again I'll say yes. Yeah. Yes, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that one woman, two women show, two man show where I'm playing a leaf or something. I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, but you just never know. I think I think it's important, especially when you're young and you're start and you're trying to you're you're this tiny tadpole in this massive pond. You know, exactly. you you're trying to get, get get yourself out there. Say yes to everything within reason. Um, yeah. Not, but not, not, not to give you a rash, but just get yeah. out there and say yes to everything. Because, it, they, like I said, you do not know who you're going to meet. You, yeah. you have no idea. You, you, you might meet your, your next best friend. Or you might meet your next employer. You, you might meet the person who writes, who writes the next big musical, the next big play, the next big TV show, and they're thinking of you for that, yeah. for that, for that painting they're creating. Do you know what I mean, you might be the color purple that they need in that yeah. in that show. Do you know what I mean, yeah. the, the right shade of blue that they need in that show. So. Yeah. I think it's important to say yes to everything. Um, don't think that don't think that th things are above you because they're not. Like you know, just, just because it's a, it's a you're playing, you know, the the fourteenth man in a, in a show at, at, at the Union Theatre. The Union, and, and it's tiny. The theatre is this big, but you're and you're playing the man at the back. Don't don't think you're you're not as important as the guy who's got the lead part. Because when I'm coming to the show, I'm watching every single person in that show uh, because in my head the ensemble is just as important if not more important yeah. um than the lead that's that's just my Very personal important. thing yeah. yeah but don't but and i've seen a lot of people think that they are oh well i'm i'm 18 19 20 i've just got drama school i'm now the lead in this and they and they have this thing where they they kind of go from job to job and they do think that they're that they're high and mighty look at them now they're not they're, they're, they're in the same boat as the person who, who was who was going from ensemble job to ensemble job to maybe a little swing job here and there yeah. they're in the same boat exactly. you know so no one is more important than, than the other it's a team effort as we know create, creating theatre is not about one person it's about yeah. every person in that room yeah. um so yeah say yes to everything within reason um and if and if a project speaks to you oh my god grab it and say yes 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 even if you are the the ensemble member yeah. but you still love this project you grab right. it because 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 you, you go in there with this attitude of this is the show that i've wanted to do yeah sure i'm not playing the lead role but that's okay because i'm still in the show i'm still yeah. putting this story out there you know so exactly no that's really good i think that's some really good advice and i think that should inspire people to kind of keep going because it's so hard it oh. is industry it is especially especially now because again the, the new normal is it's going to be it's going to be harder for people to um to get 
on the ladder or back on the ladder because yeah. bear in mind unfortunately there are people who have come before us who are in there who are still working yeah. who have got who have got the the Olivier's and the West End credits yeah. and that kind of stuff who might who might get the get the project first but um what they always say I've, I've said this for so many years now even and I, I, I should say it to myself at, at drama school um I think this came out because I got told the nose and yeah you should, you should probably do you should probably do something, something else oh, I used to always tell myself Daniel what else can you do <laughs> and then you're and like, because I'm, oh. I'm one of the people like I will, I would have a full on chat with myself if I need to. I'm like, right, let's look in the mirror. What's going on today? Let's have a good old chat, which, which <laughs> looks insane, but I think it's, I think it's very healthy. Do, do you know what I mean? Very yeah. healthy. Um, so I say, well, Daniel, what else can you do? I was like, I, I, I don't know what, what else can I do. And I remember I wrote a massive long list of things um, of stuff I used to do, and I used to go from like all kind of performance based stuff to like, okay, or well, I like food. I'll be, I'll be a chef. I'll be a cook, and then that would inspire me to. Oh, if, if I was, if I was a chef, I could be like a celebrity um, presenter, cook, and that kind of stuff. So it always, that's the thing. It always led itself back to performing in some <laughs> shape or form, randomly. But I said, well, what else can you do? And, and yeah. I remember on this list, I used to go. I like to write. Um, I don't think I'm a good director, but I feel like if I learn how to direct something, I could probably do it. Um, I love comedy, stand-up comedy. I remember writing stand-up comedy, writing, um, singing. Okay, and then what now, am I doing now? What am I doing now? I am writing, I'm doing stand-up, and I'm singing. Yeah. I'm just doing it in the wig and yeah. some lipstick. So exactly. you know, I, I always tell you. In, if, even when I was a teacher, I was teaching um, young kids. Again, I used to write teacher on there, and I started teaching in like school, schools around Liverpool as well. So a lot of things on the list I wrote mm -hmm. all came true because I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll go and do that then as well. Um, and I thought for a long time I was just going to be a drama teacher. Then I was like, oh, I can't because I've got to, I've got to go and do this fringe show, which is now <laughs> led to this and led to that. Right, so. Right. But I, but I used to say to all the young kids, I'd be like, guys, just, um, I used to sit them down and go, okay, guys, this is great. I'm glad that you're here for the summer experience. But just so you know, if you want to do this career, you won't work. So what else can you do? They'd be like, oh, shit, I don't know. And it's so funny. A lot, a couple of kids came back to me like, do you remember you told us what else we can do? One boy was like, oh, I'm now, he's now like a director. And he's now, he's now doing stuff in his local community, like directing wow. things and, and actually doing stuff with like community-based drama as well. Mm -hmm. So it's so funny like you, you you might have your initial thing of i want to be an actor yeah. cool but there's so many more things in the industry that we don't really get told or get taught at drama school so yeah. it's like what else can you do so that's another thing i would say to everybody it's like just ask yourself a quick question write, write a little list what else can i do yeah and then you never know you, might, you might be like oh yeah. oh i never thought of that let, let me research go on youtube see, see, see who else is doing it yeah. poetry i don't know whatever oh Poetry, that was quite fun. I'll just write a poem today. And next yeah. minute, you've, you, you've got, you, you're performing slam poetry. And yeah, who knows? Yeah, so, yeah. No, that's really, really good. I think that a lot of people would like to sort of, maybe they'll start asking themselves that internal question, you know, when they need to. And ask it early, ask it early. Because if, yeah. if, if I was say that, if I was like 15 and asked myself that, um, I, m I might write down three things. <gasps> but can you imagine that revelation when you go, oh my God, I'm good at that, I'm good at that, I'm good at that. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> cool. So well, I guess the next question, so they're like, we're going to wrap it up in a bit anyway. So I just kind of want to know what's next for you. Obviously, I know you've been working sort of throughout lockdown. We're starting to sort of see some little eases take place where we might be able yeah. to start doing some performances start to happen again at some point who knows, mm, what, who what, knows? Like, what direction are you wanting to go in and kind of how you're going to pick yourself back up to go back into the industry sort of full time again yeah um i mean like i said i've got a few bits and bobs like drag related stuff so i've got um i've got a show coming out with a uh, bagger and blue coming out oh, soon, nice. which is like an agony art kind of thing for me on youtube like a it's like a vlogcast kind of thing uh reality check with, with yahoo which is great um i'm doing my my, my recap show with um with, with world of wonder the producer of drag race i'm doing that all, all on their platform it's so funny like uh, you know i didn't even win the, i didn't come close to winning the show but i've got i've got the i've got a show i've got two shows shows now coming out on the same platform as the winner but wow. <laughs> um, so way <laughs> yeah no, right, spin off spin off galore so i've got those come up pro projects there i think my biggest dream is to especially with drag is just to be touring with my own show like i know it sounds really simple but actually my biggest dream right now would just to be 
get get a show finished and written, very kind of Bet Midler vibes, yeah. and just take it out on the road and go and you know, and do the UK, do Europe, do America, do Canada, Australia, just do everywhere with this with this show. Um, and you know everything else is like a bonus to me. But that's like that's like the biggest dream for me, is just yeah. kind of have this big show. Maybe maybe you know one day the Palladium. Who knows? <laughs> but, um, but what? Why not? If 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 Miss Cracker can be there and she's and she she and she only filled half the half the auditorium. I'm yeah. sure I could get there at some yeah, point. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I'm so I think for me it's just, you know, I've got this amazing platform with drag race and, and um as much as I'm not trying to be like an activist or a, you know or or a politician, that kind of stuff, I still want it to mean more than just me that like just just taking a selfie going like, like my pictures. You know, I think I think I'm a voice for so many different kids who look like me, from the same background, sound like me, queer black kids who are probably from single parent, working class families. I know when I was a kid, I had to find that in certain women or certain certain characters I saw that kind of stuff. But um, you know, I know for a fact I'm kind of like a, a beacon of hope for some kids out there. So I so I want I want to use the platform for more than just you know selfies and that kind of stuff and my yeah. my own stuff. You know, kind of use it to kind of help other people in uh, in like a tiny way if i can yeah. so yeah I think that's what's incredible yeah. about it once you do have a platform it's great that you do have the opportunity to use it in the way to maybe do the things that you wish someone else had done for you or you know the people that had yeah been quite nice yeah absolutely and, and, and i think you know i think we're all you know whatever you know sexuality you are or color or size whatever you know you do want to find so especially as, as a young teenager and you're kind of figuring out what the hell's going on in the world especially can, can, can you imagine being 15 14 oh my now i'm gonna be like i'll be like no i don't want an iphone i don't want i don't want netflix i just want like you know my four channels or my big tv like which is that big um yeah. <laughs> um i i yeah i i like the fact that the platform is accessible and and young people can kind of look and go okay this is someone who looks like me and you know and is putting some guy out there which is more than just that and plus i've got some some new some new songs coming as well which is great so yeah for me it's all it's so much more than just doing like the one thing even though the dream is to have this tour all these touring shows and that kind of stuff yeah. there's so many more things i can do with it so yeah i just want to use it and have fun with it do you know what i mean have yeah, fun. Keep saying yes <laughs> keep it say yes have fun go to the doctors if you see a rash um and have just have a good old time do you know yeah. what i mean uh, but yeah i think it's cool like you know just having this and see where oh, it goes fantastic. well thank you so much for having a chat with me today i really think no it was sort of, um, it's nice for you to share your story and your experiences and your advice as well so i'm looking forward oh, to having me um, a young theater audience to be able to take that on board but thank you yeah. so much it's been an absolute pleasure and i'd sit here and talk to you all night if i could but you know yeah next time we'll get some gin we'll be all sorted yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much it really has been a pleasure and all of you guys, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.